This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI's newest product, Insights, assists in closing lucrative skill gaps. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners will receive at least 20% off or as much as 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. The discount is based on the size of your team when you fill out their form. Well, you, you know, one of the things that these word processors did was allow us to collaborate, but even collaboration has changed a great deal. And I know that that is what Lucid does. Can, can you tell me a little bit about how Lucid approaches the idea of collaboration? What, what are you trying to help people do? Yeah, happy to do that. You know, Lucid plays in the space of visual collaboration. And I think the fundamental problem that we're trying to help people with really comes down to this is that when people work together, they quickly discover that written and spoken language is imprecise. And so, you know, for thousands of years, people have looked for ways to bridge that gap. Uh, and historically, maybe that was, you know, writing on a cave wall or more recently is writing on a whiteboard or a napkin or getting into the same room so we can see each other's body language, some way to augment the conversation visually. Visual collaboration and Lucid specifically uh, really focuses on how we help teams to see and build the future. And we think about how, how does a team start at an idea and progress along a journey from that idea all the way to reality? Uh, and, and how can they do that in a very collaborative visual way uh, and the visual aspect overcomes the imprecision. It helps teams to get to clarity faster. It helps them to get to alignment faster. Uh, and ultimately, it helps them to build the future faster. Well, building a future faster is, is really interesting because I think it's what all companies are trying to do. But how does Lucid approach collaboration in a way that is fundamentally different than any of the other collaboration programs. You know, collaboration as a category uh, had been growing for a while, and then during the pandemic, it seems to have just exploded. So, so what is Lucid doing that is different than what some of the, the other pro companies are doing? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things there. And, and, and really, during the pandemic, there was immense pressure put on the patterns of how people collaborate. And, and, and there was immediate need for new ways to do it because people were suddenly in different working patterns. Fortunately for Lucid and, and, and you know, solutions similar to Lucid, uh, we were well positioned and already had solutions that, that knew how to play in this new world. Uh, and so I think the thing that makes Lucid quite different from other competing offerings in the space uh, it really comes down to two things. One, you know, I mentioned earlier that Lucid really focuses on this complete journey that people take from idea to reality. And Lucid spans and covers more of that journey, has more breadth across that journey and our functionality and capability than any other player out there. And so the idea that we can support the collaboration all the way from the earliest ideas through to where it's like out there, it's real and people are doing it. Uh, that's the one thing. The second thing that Lucid is really known for and, and that people love about our platform and our offerings comes down to a, a, you know, an underlying platform that has a set of data and automation capabilities. And so you're not just doing everything on your own on a canvas, but Lucid is doing a lot to help assist and automate that process. And even though you're playing what you know feels very free form on a canvas, uh, that information can be data backed. And so as you are doing things visually on a canvas, it's actually updating the underlying systems of record or updating the other data sets that you need to integrate with other systems or to carry the work process forward and farther. So it's a combination of breadth of workflow uh, and then the depth and the data and automation capabilities that really set Lucid apart. Now, Lucid is, I'm assuming, a browser-based set of software, or do you have your own clients that companies load? Yeah, Lucid is predominantly used in a web browser. We also have native applications for iOS and Android devices. Uh, and, and really the origins of Lucid started out when one of our co-founders got frustrated with, you know, another similar product on the market, Visio at the time. And his basic thought was as simple, which is like, why can't this be web-based and collaborative? Uh, and that was the origin of how, you know, our first product Lucid Chart came to market was, and so it's always been a SaaS based, web based collaborative product from the very beginning. 
we've then expanded that portfolio over time to you know broaden it and introduce beyond lucid chart things like lucid spark and lucid scale to cover you know a breadth of different use cases that knowledge workers go through yeah, I've got to ask a, a couple of things. Number one, you talked about the mobile clients. Do you have a good sense of how frequently people use this on a mobile device versus using it on the larger screen of, say, a laptop or a desktop or, I suppose, even a, a large monitor in a conference room? I, I think we still have conference rooms. Yeah, we, I, I've heard they still exist. Um, and and based on um, you know requests from some of our largest customers, I think that they're coming back into fashion. We have a lot of customers that uh, are making sure we have strong support for large form factor touch devices, right? So like some huge monitor, which is touch enabled, which becomes basically like a digital whiteboard uh, inside of a conference room, which we do have uh, and support and increasing support for those devices. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, deployment, it's interesting. I think the, the majority of usage is still in a web browser for our products uh, and, and we see patterns of usage. And, and I think what it comes down to is when people are in a heavy content creation mode, they're often looking for, you know, more screen real estate, more capability, uh, you know, with a, a larger keyboard, their mouse, a stylus, things like that. Um, we also though see a lot of that increasingly moving toward tablet size form factors uh, where people are interacting with the stylus and things like that. Uh, and then also on a mobile phone, uh, the nature of a lot of the content, um, you know, you're doing a lot of pinching and zooming on a mobile phone if, you, if you're looking at, you know, complex diagrams or, or robust, uh, you know, uh, brainstorming sessions or things like that. And so I think that's part of what drives it is that the use case, the use, what people are creating um, tends to work better on a larger screen, whether that's a tablet or, or a desktop or laptop. 